You want to start world building for a TTRPG, or a book, or a game, or just because of sheer boredom. But where do you start? What are the first things to do? How do you get from a simple idea, an image in your head, to a whole world? In this episode on world building, I will guide you through creating one of the most important tool in your toolbox. Something that will be a game changer when world building, so stick around and find out more. Hello all you funky people, Funky Monkey here, welcome to today's episode. As you might have noticed, this isn't your usual episode. For today I decided to do something completely different. I hearkened back to the beginnings of my world building some six years ago and realized that one of the things that helped me tremendously in my world building endeavors was a map. A simple basic map. So I want to share that with you. Share how to start making a map even if you've never made one before, especially if you've never made one before. Until now I've taken you on multiple journeys through history to help you with ideas, with inspiration and information, to help you improve your world. But at one point I decided to actually help you get started on one of the most wonderful and rewarding journeys you could embark on. That of actually building a world from scratch. And today I will combine history with making a map. Woohoo! I'm so excited. For the purposes of this video we will be working with a high medieval, high magic fantasy setting. This, in short, means knights in shining armor, dragons, wizards, elves, dwarves, krakens, lots of magic. Now, because this is an episode a little out of the ordinary for me, I decided to not go with coffee because I'm gonna get jumpy, not go with something something for the soul because I'm coming down with something and so I will only go with some lovely lovely tea. Oh and my assistant is right over here slipping her whiskers off. Now I'm sure that they will make an appearance on my map because they are drawn to maps for some reason. Now for the pre-built checklist this time. Again, I have some really, really awesome tea because I really need it. And I also have a few tools this time. I have sheets of paper, I have a um, pencil and an eraser. How about you? Are you comfy? Are you cozy? Are you ready for a story and some drawing, map making, creating things from scratch? Perfect, then I think it's time we begin. Now, first and foremost, last time we came up with a name for our world and the continent or country or region in which our adventure or story will begin. If you haven't watched my previous video, either go check it out or simply come up with a name for the world and for the realm in which everything will start. Now, a map will come in handy tremendously, but you don't need to invest days and weeks in creating the most elaborate map out there. You don't need to watch tutorials on how to represent mountain ranges and crags and canyons unless you really want to, like I did. I spent hours on end learning how to properly represent mountain ranges and I still fail at it. But no matter, that is part of my story. But you just need to have a vague image in your head. Even the most basic of maps will help you get started with the story. And trust me, once you start drawing your first sketch, you won't be able to stop, nor will you want to stop expanding your world. So we will start a map from scratch. And at the end of the video, as a bonus, I will show you the map of my world in its current form. Okay, so, in essence, there are two main ways of doing this, at least as far as I found, and three levels of complexity. First way to create a map is to do it around a location. 
The second is to create a random map and then populate it with locations. I will cover both versions if I have the time, but both start off in the same way, with questions. And both are more or less random. I cannot stress this enough. World building of any sort is simply put a process of asking and answering questions with a very, very, very generous dose of randomness. At least in my mind. This is how I created the world my players are roaming around. Now, let's go through the questions. First, so I have a list here. So I'm gonna <laughs> do it like this. So, where is the action taking place? Well, this is a very important question because things have to start somewhere. Will your adventure start on an island, a peninsula, in an, archipel in an archipelago? or somewhere inland, in a valley, in a hilly area, on mountains, on the coast, or deep underground. If, on the other hand, you are not sure, at least not yet, not a problem. The first option is for you, the most basic, so level 1.1, let's call it. It's the first level with the most basic of maps and the simple, the most simple approach. So, then let's make our simplest, I'm gonna leave it like this because, no, actually, doesn't matter. These are the questions, you can always stop and come back to them and, yeah. So, let's make the easiest map out there. I'm gonna move this a little bit here and move this here and so we have our sheets of paper here. For this you will need a sheet of paper, A4, simple, nothing, <laughs> there's a spot here, I don't like that. Uh, sorry, this is very, very annoying. Okay, so, a sheet of paper, a pencil and an eraser. Perhaps even some colorful pencils if you have them, but this is not necessarily that important but take the piece of paper and mark an X on it anywhere on the map for the simplest version I recommend you do it somewhere close to the middle of the map let's do it here I'm doing it here because we are going to build a map around a location if you place it in the middle you have all the space to work with if you place it somewhere in a corner well, that's a little bit more complex and we will get to that. But this is your settlement. Pretty, ain't it? Okay, now you have to remember one very, very important aspect from history. Throughout history, settlements, most settlements, have sprung up close to or on the shores of or banks of water usually running water. Go ahead and sketch a river from the top of the page to the bottom. Just make it a wiggly line because, well, rivers aren't straight. Now, if you're gonna leave it like this, this is going to be a very small river. It's going to be a brook, it's going to be a spring, perhaps even a tributary to a larger river. But Let's make it a little better. Let's draw a second wiggly line, uh, wiggly line, sorry. Now, this is a very large river. This is a landmark at this point. This divides the realm in two. Why? Just because. That's it. It is a lifeline and an obstacle. A lifeline because people can navigate on it and bring supplies to this here settlement and an obstacle because it's very hard to traverse it so this is a natural frontier or a defensive defensive feature it allows for fishing it allows for swimming and it prevents attacks or at least slows them down 
So even from this simple detail, we can derive so much information. So this is a very large and important river. It is a lifeline and it is a defensive feature. We already have so much. What's the name of the river? Well, name of the river, we're going to circle back. Name size of the settlement again, we can circle back, but because this is a massive river and this is a um, settlement on the banks of this river, we can say that it is a large settlement. Large. Okay, cool. Now, another thing you need to remember about history is that almost all settlements or most settlements were one day away from the next settlement people in reality very rarely if ever camped in the wilderness take this into account when creating a map it is important to have if you have a settlement you have to have a chain it has to be linked somehow to other settlements if you have settlements further apart than one day for whatever reason travelers or in our case adventurers would find um, inns or post offices or post houses meaning places where messengers could exchange horses or rest these establishments also served travelers by offering shelter in the stables or in the barns for the night. But this is something very important. If you have a settlement in the middle of nowhere, there has to be a very, very good explanation as to why that settlement was um, built there, founded there, and what it, what's the lifeline what is the logistical support it receives and how does it do it because settlements cannot exist in a vacuum okay now because we need to draw other settlements let us come up with a simple measurement and stick with it let's say that every four fingers four of my fingers you can use four of your fingers is a day's worth of travel so Let's mark out somewhere, anywhere, two more settlements. Let's do it like this. And let's mark one here. So another beautiful X. And let's do one more here. You don't have to be super precise. Just, just keep the same measurement. We have a second settlement here. Now we have three settlements. And let's do something in this part of the map. Let's do the same thing. Let's take the river as our um, point of reference and do it like this. We now have here a shelter, an inn, a post house. Now let's do like this. So from the inn right here, we have another settlement. With the X, I've marked settlements with a dot or a circle and a dot. We have marked a um, post house. Now, What's in the south? Don't know? We have no idea. We will circle back to this. Now, because we have settlements and we have everything, this is the moment I recommend you pick up some colorful uh, pencil. I'm gonna use, uh, let's go with red. Why? I don't know, red, just because. Okay, this has a particular system. Oh, look, it's so awesome, come on. Okay, perfect. See, it's amazing. Anyway, so we have a different color. Let's dot some lines, but make them random. Don't make them straight unless, unless, well, we're going to get it. Let's make one of them straight, but dot it. And let's make one a little bit random. Okay. Now, we need to connect this one, so let's draw a bridge. This is a bridge if you haven't noticed or you didn't catch on. This is a very, very sturdy bridge. 
Sorry for, uh, about the lighting. I'm gonna try to do better. Now, again, a random line and connect this one as well. Okay, so another important thing. Remember that roads usually take the easiest path or mark the easiest path from point A to point B. This means that roads will always go, will always follow the foot of the hill. If the hill is too steep, it will go up the mountain in a zigzag pattern because it's too steep to go straight up the mountain or it will go around a very deep valley or it will go through a mountain. Now we've created some curves okay there's an easy question that comes up now what are the obstacles the roads are going around what are the obstacles this is very very important because this is how we are starting to populate the map take another color let's go with green but deep green and let us trace just trace don't go overboard, don't go crazy with this, just create a rounded shape. This is a forest, this is a massive forest. This is one of the most important forests in this whole region. We're gonna make another, let's say, um, a smaller chunk over here, and sure. This is a very heavily wooded area, okay? The post house or the inn is in an area where there are clearings. It's easier to find your way. If you just follow the shortest path through the forest, you reach here, blah, blah, blah. Now, what's the name of the forest? Well, we don't know. We're gonna circle back to this. Let's circle back to this. Yeah, that's the symbol. I'm just going like this in case you didn't do this. Anyway, now, are there any mountains or hills around? Let's make some hills. Hills are quite easy to make. Just create some small mounds like this, okay? Nothing to complicated, nothing too artistic. You just need to convey the idea that there are some hills here, okay? And you can make them smaller and smaller because they are becoming gentler and gentler. You now have hills. Just don't draw very jagged lines when you're trying to represent hills. Jagged lines are for mountains and Let's draw some mountains right over here, okay? Don't judge me, I'm not the best at drawing mountains. As I mentioned earlier, I'm still struggling. There are multiple ways of drawing mountains. I haven't settled on one, but actually I have settled on one. It's quite simple. I'm gonna show you later on. Okay, so these are our mountains. This is a huge mountain right here. There's a smaller range here, a smaller here. Yeah, this is not a mountain. What? I Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, so these are mountains. Now, I wrote here a uh, distance road. Why no road? Because this is what. See, this is why there is no road connecting these two settlements. Now, you could explain that the road goes beyond here, but you've created another landmark, something very obvious, something very important, something towering that breaks off this part of the kingdom, realm, continent, whatever you want to, you want this to be. So, we have a forest that is pierced by this road. We have 
hills, we have a mountain range here and you can extend it as much as you want over here. Of course, you can populate the rest of the map as you say fit. But now, we have to circle back. What are the names of the settlements? You just have to come up with some names. What's the name of the forest? Again, come up with names. We're gonna approach this in a second. What's very important, let's make a compass here. So we have north, south, east and west. Okay. As you might have noticed, there is nothing to the south of my map. Why is that? This is the point where you can start improvising a lot. What's over here? I don't know. Let's say that a day's worth south, so one more time here, we have a watchdog. It's a small, small watchtower. Let's represent it uh, like this. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with fire. Okay. This is a watchtower. There is a road that leads down. We've just created something out of thin air. And let's say that half of the travel, so two fingers, we have an abandoned wizard's tower. Why was it abandoned? I don't know. Why was it a wizard's tower? I don't know. Who was the wizard? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Not at this point. Not for me, actually. But it matters for you. I just want to, to circle back a little bit with a naming point because I wanted to, to focus on this later but this is better than now because we need to fill in the map. Last time, last episode, I gave you an advice and I want to update it. I spoke of names, names for NPCs names for secondary characters, names for places, etc. I advised you to write 20 names on a sheet of paper, because I'm old-fashioned, and use these names as first names. And then I advised you to write, write 20 more and use those as surnames or last names. What I advised you to do with the last names was to take inspiration from the real world and go with professions. Miller, Mercer, Turner, Carver, Carter, Cobbler, Tanner, etc, etc, etc. And when it comes to first names, go with something that fits the theme, the idea of your world. If it's an ancient world, try to go with ancient sounding names. If it's something medieval, go with something medieval. Now, what I forgot to mention, and this is quite important, and this is a game changer, is that there are some very, very good, some amazing tools on the internet for generating names. This comes in very handy. If you go on your browser and just type in fantasy name generators, you will find many, many, many um, tools that will help you with this endeavor. The one I am using is actually called fantasynamesgenerator.com. I'm not endorsed by them in any way, but this is the tool that I've been working with and I've been using for years and I've been there while they grew and added more and more uh, species, more elements. It really grew. This is very helpful. I used to do this and I still do, but again, don't ask me why I come up with the weirdest of names. What I recommend you do 
is go and simply generate dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of um, names and stop and select those that really catch your eye. Write them down, use them so you don't forget the name of places, the name of your characters. Do you remember the captain of the guards that helped your players at one point? No? Well, he was pretty important. Just hope your players don't have a good memory. It's easier to just have lists and lists of names of places. And when it comes to naming forests or naming mountains, it's very simple. Even in real, actually inspire yourself from the real world. These are the black goat mountains not mountains, range. Black goat range. Why? Because they have a lot of black goats. Range. What's the name of the tallest peak? King goat. Why? I don't know. The locals named it. Go for the forest. Something simple. But if you want to go with a high fantasy world, this is, let's say, this is Phase Mirror. Why? I don't know. Just name it Phase Mirror. And this is good. I forgot about this. Always have lakes. Draw some lakes. Just put it right over here. Okay, so this is a bend in the road. We have an obstacle, let's draw a lake. This is a lake, and there is a spring that flows from the mountains. And this is your lake. Voila, you also have a lake. Phase mirror, okay? In the middle of the forest, we have a lake, okay? This is the mirror. That's it. That's that's everything you need. When it comes to the blank areas, you can create a marsh. Just try to make it logical and have smooth transitions. And this, if this is a mountainous region with hills and forest, don't just throw in a, a marsh unless it's a magical effect. But you can represent marshes like this, just small plants that give you the impression of yeah, just plants growing. Nothing too complicated, okay? Don't go overboard. This is a very simple map. But again, it's taking shape. Now, to the south, instead of having a watchtower and an abandoned wizard's tower, you can have a permanent uh, garrison because you have the border here. Okay, this is not how I represent the borders. The borders on my maps are represented like uh, this. Why? I don't know. It's a double dotted line. That's it. Now, if this is a permanent garrison, what is it protecting the realm from? What's beyond the border? What's lurking down here that this realm needs a permanent large fortress with a permanent large uh, military unit. Another question. That's it. What's over there? You answer it. This is the place where you can come up with anything you want. You want this to be the coast? Perfect. This is just another settlement. You want this to be a uh, border? Okay, this is... Um, Settlement that guards the border. You want this to be a massive um, lake of lava? Perfect. It's your world. Just remember that this is the most simple of maps. You don't even need colors. You just need to mark things. To know that this weird shape here is a forest. Phase mirror wood. Now we know for sure that this is a wood, a, a forest. These are mountains, these are hills, you can actually, let's call them 
Oh. Um. Penir. Penir Hills. That's it. This is um, Hag's Waters. That's it. This is the most basic of maps. This is something that can get you started. This is something that can help you get an idea of what your world looks like. There's no wrong way of doing it. The only way you can mess this up, in my opinion, is that is by not making it. What's upstream? You have so many questions. What's downstream? I don't know. What lies beyond the edges of this map that we just created? I don't know yet. This is something for you to discover. This is for something. This is something for me to discover. And you just have to expand it if you want. But this is the most simple of things. You can name this settlement, you can name this settlement, you can name this, this lake, everything. And this, my friends, is the simplest method of making a map. You go in the center and you create everything around a settlement. Now, I think I'm gonna need a little bit more light because I feel like I'm in a dungeon and although I do like dungeons, uh, is it better? A little better, perfect. So, um, yeah, this is the simplest of maps. You started by going in the center, creating a river and that's it. Everything from here expands. Now. Let's go for something a little bit more complex. And for this, this is the second method. I'm gonna call it uh, 2.1, okay? Because we can go even even harder, even in this case. So let's, let me make a little bit of room here. And yeah, just give me a second. Oh, hang on, I forgot something. If you want to start in a different location because you envision this basic uh, map, you envision the initial settlement or location where the adventure begins in a mountain range or next to a lake, you just adjust. You can add a lake here. That's it. Wham, bam. You can add the mountain range and then draw an X here. That's where your settlement is, right up there. Why? Because you want it there. You want it there. You can put it here. This is an elvish settlement. You can put it here. This is a dwarvish settlement, etc, etc, etc. So this isn't uh, the only way to do it. I hope you realize this. Now, for something a little bit more complex, for this... Okay, sorry. For this, you are going to need uh, A3 paper. This is what I recommend, to be honest. This is A3 paper. These are the dimensions. Uh, this is the kind of paper you can really draw on. Now, have a lot of it here because, well, I like making maps and it's easier to do it on paper like this. Um, perhaps for some people, this is immersion breaking. I understand that. There are ways of going around this. So first you can draw on this kind of map and then come in with a very thin uh, sheet of paper, just overlay it and just lay it on top and just draw what's underneath, so on and so forth. But this is the way I do it because I, well, this was initially the only kind of paper I had. And once I began drawing, I went with it full on. So, yeah. Now, this version is quite interesting and a little bit out of the ordinary. First and foremost, make sure you have some obstacles that you can place around. I'm not gonna do that right now. I trust my own, <laughs> my own abilities. Now, 
you will need things you have multiples of. You can, if you have many, many dice because you collect dice or you're a world hammer player or for whatever reason, go with dice. You can go with Lego pieces. Um, go with multiple loaves. You can go with chickpeas or dried beans or you can go with anything that doesn't make a mess. Now, the logic behind this is that you're gonna generate a random map and these are your random map generators. There are multiple ways of doing this. You go like this and now you play around with... This is your landmass. You don't have to put too much on it, but this gives you a rough idea of what your map will look like. This is one version. Of course, you can go in and draw your own coastline or your own inland. Let's say that this is the inland. This is just part of the continent. The world is, well, made up of. This is one continent of your world. But doing this allows you to get a rough idea of what your landmass will look like. Okay? You can either throw everything on the table and see what sticks and how and what it looks like or you can do it like this and actually move things around until you are happy with the shape the map is taken now the easiest way is to outline but very gently very faintly i'm not doing faintly i'm not doing it faintly but just do the outline this is going to be your coast okay you can see we're gonna have perhaps a huge lake over there sorry i'm focusing now we have the outline of our continent okay this is our continent let me put the chickpeas back in the bowl because uh, i'm gonna make a hummus <laughs> later this week the paper was clean i'm gonna clean the chickpeas everything is going to be awesome and as you can see there is no mess left behind after. So this is the landmass, okay? Now we can go in and make the edges a little bit more jagged because um, the edges of a continent aren't always smooth as continents tend to form by breaking off in bits and pieces and so on and so forth. You get the idea, okay? You can go around the whole map and just just define the coast better okay i like what we've got here it's quite interesting but i find it to be a little too small for the purposes of this exercise so let's let's go off into the distance because there's a purpose to this I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why I want to go a little bit bigger with this continent over here. Okay, so let's say that this is one of the many continents that make up your world. Okay, you can see we've defined everything almost. Now it's looking like a big weird cloud. Okay. You can leave, you can allow your hand to just flow naturally and see where it takes you. Okay. Now, this is perfect, okay? So, now, the part I really, 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 really enjoy, really enjoy it. You can take three chickpeas or three dice. I'm gonna use dice because I like dice more, okay? I use the chickpeas. Now, Let's say that 
we envision a continent where we have three kingdoms or three empires or just for this exercise you take the dice or your random generator and you just throw them okay these are too close so we're gonna move this one and throw it like this okay too close but nonetheless let's say that these three are the three capitals of the empires okay we have the capitals now let's take several more dice let's take uh, three more and with the three we originally had Woo! hang on sorry of course now this works better oh let's i think i have a better eye solution uh two four six six chickpeas i lost a chickpea that's not good. <laughs> See, I'm rearranging things. So, these six are your other main settlements. Okay? We have six more settlements. And you can move them around, okay? If you don't like... Okay, let's put it here because I have an idea. And like this. These are your main settlements. Not the only ones. These are the most important settlements. Now, we can keep going and say, okay, we have cities, we have some more important settlements. Let's see where the mountains will pop up on this map. So we take all of our dice, or fewer or many more, okay? So the idea of ensuring things do not fall kind of went out the window. So, but you can see right here. We can draw a little island here because we had a mountain here. So now we have an island. We can make a little um, archipelago, have several islands, some smaller, some bigger. Yeah, just ignore the fact that I made almost a square. Just ignore that, please. But we have this range here. So this can actually help us a lot. Let's mark it. Mark it. Mark it. Mark it. And again, we have an island here. Okay? And one here because we had a die. Now, in order to represent mountain ranges like this, we already have a settlement here close to the um, end of the mountain range and here on the mountains themselves. This is awesome, right? I like this. So, in order to generate mountains, it's easier to just make some very jagged lines like this. It's weird, but believe me, they're gonna look amazing, hopefully, and do it like this. Now, we can start making mountains, okay? So, choose a direction and just go with them. Okay, they're not the best mountains ever, but they are my mountains at this point, okay? Oh, you get the idea. It's easier if you make it like this, if you draw the mountains um, vertically, not horizontally, but either way, you get the point, you, you can make small mountain ranges that divide your world this let's make this one a big one this is the most important mountain in the area and maybe i don't know like this and like this and whatever you have a mountain range it's as easy as that you have a mountain range now let's 
go for the rivers let's select let's make have three large rivers perfect this is one river this is another river that flows into a huge lake and let's say that this is one of the few rivers in this world that flow here and you have a delta that's it you are now creating a very very random map now let's roll for lakes voila you have a huge lake here let's mark it one of the largest lakes in this con on this continent let's make another map uh, another map another lake another one and let's make another one here and one other one here so we have a river that connects so again we can have a river that flows into this lake from the mountains and then it goes down in this lake that's it. Rivers. Rivers. Now let's go for some forests. I, <laughs> I have two dice underneath my table right now. Let's go with the green. We have, look, perfect. We have a forest right here. We have a forest right here. These mountains are covered in huge ancient forests. Nobody has ever explored. See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. And now you have a randomly generated map that you can populate and you can explain however you want. Of course, there are many digital solutions when it comes to map making. There are many, many software um, options, many websites out there, but I like to go a little bit old school i like uh, taking some pencils taking some uh, yeah paper pencils razors put on some music and just draw and come up with ideas as i am drawing of course we can now draw roads yeah so this is where the colors come in handy okay these are roads and you can see they are going around and again you can populate this however you want the border is like this for one of the empires the kingdoms um, it goes like this and it goes like this okay and now you've divided the world in three now you have you can go on and create a plot hook you can this is a whole continent this is a whole world you can then of course go in and ink the edges of the coasts use some uh, black ink blank uh, black gel pencils anything there's not much else to it I'm I'm gonna stop rambling because this is it. This is part of your world. You can of course create another mountain range like this if you want to and this is better to to create it like this because it's a little bit more believable, you know? It looks a little bit better, but you don't have to go into all this detail and try to to find the best way to represent mountains there are many tutorials out there that can show you how to represent mountains so look i have a small mountain range uh, there are many many tutorials out there that show you how to better represent hills 
okay we have hills bordering the mountains this is why the river flows like this because look it's following the path of last uh, of least resistance okay this is all you need you can start from here and create a whole world you can throw the dice or the chickpeas or the lego pieces over and over again and keep populating this map but you don't have to starting from this you can go and say okay of course the uh, this kingdom would create a um, settlement here uh, over here because you have a delta which is very very important uh, they've colonized this isle and uh, no actually this is uh, in conflict this is a contingency point a contingency point this is point of contention both kingdoms claim this isle and already you've created political intrigue you don't have to go overboard this is this could be the beginning this could be everything you need you can then go zoom in and voila create this one so let's see if this fits somewhere we have mountains we have uh oh look Phase mirror. Phase mirror. We have a river that flows like this. And it's a big, chunky river. And it flows... Hmm. It flows like this. Dividing the whole continent. Just, yeah, perfect. This is Black Goat Range. Black Goat Range. And this, my friends, this is your settlement right here. Look, this is it. This is it. Let oh, down. That's it. Now we have some hills here. This is it. Nothing else. You don't need to go overboard. You don't need to waste weeks and months thinking about this. You just created the setting for your campaign, for your book, for your game, whatever it is that you are creating. Because we have a lot of water here, we can actually have hex waters here, right? Look, we have a small marshland. Look, it's so pretty. It's insane. Look, that's it. It's perfect. You don't need anything else. You have this settlement right over here. You have this right here or actually right here. Yeah. And of course, because it's a larger map, you can change the the distances so two fingers means a full day's um, worth of travel and so on and so forth there's a huge bridge right here and that's it nothing else you are done and there it is my friends a map for your world you can build it from scratch you can start from some ideas but just start it just do it started i promise you won't regret it and i promise this will at one point well actually this will turn into this and this will turn into hmm, let me show you what it turns into oh before that one more thing if you want to make it prettier let's say that these are sheer cliffs because we have the mountains here eh? you outline you trace the the coast here yeah and you can do it all the way yeah and just do it like this and now you have cliffs and when it comes to the coastline you can do it like this yeah if you look at maps you will see that 
they depict waves more or less and you can go like this and these are small waves that come in and you can make a um, compass here a rose compass or whatever it's called yeah you can make a small dragon or a ship you know the drill you know what a, a medieval or fantasy map looks like now let me show you why this is only the beginning all right so not many people have seen this outside my group of close friends and my players who are also my close friends but let me show you my first map ever 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 this is my first map this is it this is kadama right i, sp I spoke of this continent this is my first continent as you can see it's very busy i tried all these methods i've tried look at the mountain ranges the lakes the rivers cities these cities are larger these are smaller this is the capital mountain ranges the forest different methods of representing them as you can see the coastline is outlined well it's thicker uh, road these are um, routes um, maritime trade routes but then I went further because believe you me you won't stop at one single map this is the second map I made and as you can see this is worse than the first one because I was trying something different this is a huge lake, this is Weird AF, Lake of Sorrow, it has a story. Um, Meteor basically uh, crashed here and raised a whole kingdom and created this whole um, crater that filled with the tears of the survivors and so on. So, but I wasn't there, no, no, no. Because my wife wanted to introduce the Vikings in this world so i've created more i drew some more this is the area where the kulvarak or the vikings of my world live as you can see they are north of the rest but oh my friends i did not stop there because i wanted to go south and west these are better as you can see the forests here are better represented than these over here they are more um yeah they are more believable down here again marshes forests rivers lakes seas but i'm not done do you think i'm done no i have the bottom of my map and if you're thinking that, okay, okay, funky monkey, this is enough, this surely is enough. Oh, my friends, you haven't seen anything. Nope, this is a city. Yeah, next time, perhaps we're gonna speak of cities. This is the west, the east of my world. El Sarel Archipelago, Sinamiar Sirin, another um this is more or less um <sighs> this used to be a continent that was uh torn asunder for some reason i don't know yet i don't know why it's a huge archipelago it has thousands and thousands of isles but this is inhabited by elves this is fair isles oh no this is fair isles where a massive battle took place, a, a naval battle where my players um, led the armada. Then I have... nope. Another part, this is the west, and so on and so forth. Nope, this is another city. This is somewhere in the world. And again, this is in the north, this is uh, Sereum Archipelago, 
this is with undeads and so on and so forth if i'm not mistaken yeah this is with undeads uh this is an island that guards the area it's so much there's so 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 much you can do and i promise you will do oh look so my camera just uh cut off I don't know where it stopped, but as I was saying, I promised you this is not the end. This is just the beginning. This is the south of my world. I tried. I tried, I tried, I tried. I'm not proud of it. It could have been done better. I actually am a little bit proud of it because it's the first time I tried uh, Rose Compass. Look, I tried the small... I don't know what this is. Nessie, Loch Ness Monster. I don't know. And I have more, and more, and more, and more. These all go together, so they're not isolated. This eventually has to be stuck together and scanned. Nope, this is something else. And I'm gonna scan it, and I'm gonna digitalize it, and have it on my computer, because the pages are coming um, apart. And... I want to have it forever and ever because this is, I've worked on this for months and months and months. Uh, this is the first map I've ever made and next time I think we should talk about maps for settlements because again it's very cathartic. You can just pop up, pop on some music or a um, uh, show that you really enjoy and know by heart and just meditate by drawing maps and cities and settlements and whatnot. This, again, in my opinion, is one of the best tools you can have in your toolbox when you're creating a world from scratch. Even if you're not creating a world from scratch, even you already, if you already have an idea, if you already have a story that you've been building over time, put it on paper create a map i promise it's very rewarding and with that potatoes 18th name is a voice we're gonna expand on that and with that i want to apologize if i rambled on or if i repeated the same thing over and over again i'm still getting used to making these kind of videos on the fly and out of the ordinary for me and yeah, potatoes playing with the chickpea I dropped. Uh, I truly hope you learned something new today and you found some inspiration and learned how to better help yourself while building a world from scratch. Now, if you found value in this video, please make sure you hit that like as it shows me it actually helped you. Don't be shy and subscribe to this growing funky community and make sure you hit that bell to be notified the next time I put a video out. And if you really, really want to share, please do so. Share it with your friends, your DMs, your GMs, your pets, friends, neighbors, grandparents, everybody. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. I truly hope you really learned something today and found some inspiration for your own world. And I can't wait to see you all funky people here next time on Funky Monkey MP, the place where you get your dose of miniature painting, history, world building and trivia. Remember, be curious, take inspiration from the past and never stop learning, world building and creating amazing things, whatever those are. Your mind and imagination are wonderful and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Until next time, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful, funky day. Cheers.